1800 hours Pakistan Standard Time. Assalamu alaikum. This is Radio Pakistan. The news read by Daman Zaman. The headlines. The Prime Minister, while launching Kisan portal under the Pakistan Citizens Portal in Islamabad today, said the government will help farmers in adopting new techniques to increase the crop's yield. The National Assembly was informed today that around 270 billion rupees have been released for the development of tribal districts. The Information Minister has emphasized imparting training to journalists in the field of modern technology, enabling them to deal with modern narrative warfare while disseminating information. Pakistan has welcomed the recent OIC statements demanding an accountability for increasing Islamophobia and systematic and targeted violence against the Muslims in India. The All Parties Hurriyat Conference has deplored the criminal silence adopted by the international community over the ongoing worst Indian state terrorism in the illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. In Afghanistan, 32 people were killed in an explosion inside a mosque in Kandhar city today. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Imran Khan has emphasized on research and adoption of modern techniques to enhance agricultural production. Addressing the launching ceremony of Kisan portal for the farmers today under the Pakistan Citizens Portal, he said the government would help the farmers in adopting new techniques to increase the crop yield. The Prime Minister said steps have been taken to ensure that farmers receive due price of the crops. He said the government's initiative of Kisan card would provide direct subsidy to small farmers. Imran Khan said the health card would also benefit the farmers in treatment of their ailing family members. Prime Minister Imran Khan says imparting vocational training to the youth is the government's priority and it is determined to provide all possible assistance to the small and medium enterprises. Chairing a review meeting on priority sectors in Islamabad today, he said the overseas Pakistanis are, are a great asset of Pakistan and all foreign missions have been directed to collaborate with the Ministry of Federal Education and Professional Training to ensure export of skilled workforce. The Prime Minister said a comprehensive strategy has been evolved to this effect for the first time in the history of Pakistan. The meeting was informed about making the administrative procedure easy for the overseas Pakistanis and small and medium enterprises, as well as the progress on various memoranda of understanding signed during the foreign visits of the Prime Minister. The President, Dr. Arif Falvi, has stressed the need of promoting technical education and information technology so as to fulfill the requirements of industrial sector and provide employment opportunities to the youth. The President expressed these views during a briefing on Sir Sayyid Center for Advanced Studies in Engineering and Technology in Islamabad today. The President said technological and industrial development is directly linked to the quality of education. He said the higher education institutions need to focus on research and development to put the country on the path of development. The National Assembly was informed today that around 270 billion rupees have been released for the development of the tribal districts. This was informed by the Parliamentary Secretary for Finance, Zan Qureshi, while responding to a calling attention notice regarding non-allocation of additional 3% of National Finance Commission's award to Khabar Pakhtunkhwa for the development of erstwhile FATA. He said 121 billion rupees were released for the development of the tribal districts in 2019-2020, while 121 billion rupees were allocated in the last fiscal year. He said 51.5 billion rupees were released, whereas an additional amount of 129.7 billion rupees have been allocated during the current fiscal year. 
The Minister for Information and Broadcasting, Chaudhry Fawad Hussain, has urged the media to provide solutions to deal with the issue of fake news. Addressing a ceremony in Islamabad today, he said the issue of fake news has become a big challenge in the era of modern technology. The Information Minister emphasized on important training to journalists in the realm of modern technology, enabling them to deal with the modern narrative warfare while disseminating information. He said the media should initiate a debate within itself to face the challenge of fake news. He stressed the need for providing information with responsibility. Chaudhry Fawad Hussain said India has created 785 websites to disseminate fake news against Pakistan. This is Radio Pakistan. The Finance Minister Shaukat Tareen says the government's prudent fiscal reforms have helped improve tax-to-GDP ratio, bringing down the current account and fiscal deficit while improving revenue generation. He was addressing a seminar on Pakistan's economy held at the Embassy of Pakistan in Washington. The minister emphasized that Prime Minister Imran Khan is committed to inclusive and sustainable economic growth that benefits all segments of the society, especially the poor. He said increasing tax collection and broadening the tax base are key targets of the government's fiscal agenda. The government has allowed NEPRA to increase electricity tariff by 1.39 rupees per unit from next month. This was stated by the Minister for Energy, Hamad Azhar, while addressing a news conference along with the Minister of State for Information and Broadcasting, Fadruk Habib, in Islamabad today. He said NEPRA had recommended an increase of 3.5 rupees per unit in March. The energy minister said 46% of the domestic consumers using less than 200 units will not be affected by this increase. He said the raise in the tariff will also not have any impact on industrial package. Pakistan has welcomed the recent OIC statements demanding an accountability for the increasing Islamophobia and systematic and targeted violence against Muslims in India. At the weekly news briefing in Islamabad today, the Foreign Office spokesperson Asim Iftikhar said it is encouraging that human rights situation in India and illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir has gained increasing attention of the international community. Alluding to the Gujarat massacre and Delhi riots, as well as recent attacks on Muslims in Assam, the spokesperson stressed that this international scrutiny of India must continue. The Foreign Office spokesperson asked India to stop peddling falsehood and smear campaign against Pakistan. He condemned the recent irresponsible and provocative statement of the Indian Home Minister and reiterated that Pakistan is a peace-loving country. However, it will spare no effort to resolutely thwart any aggressive Indian designs. In the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, the All Parties Youth Conference has deplored the criminal silence adopted by the international community on the ongoing worst Indian state terrorism in the territory. The APHC spokesman in a statement in Serenagar said the Indian troops and police personnel are killing, arresting and torturing innocent Kashmiris and destroying civilian dwellings during the so-called cordon and search operations across the occupied territory on daily basis to suppress their ongoing freedom struggle. He urged the United Nations to hold India accountable for its brutalities in the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir and play role in settling the Kashmir dispute in accordance with the United Nations Security Council's resolutions and Kashmiri's aspirations. In Afghanistan, 32 people were killed and 45 wounded in an explosion inside a mosque in Kandahar city today. The spokesman for Kandahar Central Hospital said the cause of the blast could not immediately be identified. Meanwhile, the Interior Ministry spokesman Kari Sayyid Khosti in a tweet said we are saddened to learn that an explosion took place in a mosque in which a number of our compatriots were martyred and wounded. And finally, the weather.
mainly dry weather is likely to prevail in most parts of the country during the next tw 12 hours. However, rain when thunderstorm is expected in isolated places in Upper Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Gilgit Baltistan and Kashmir. And that is the end of this news bulletin. For more news and analyses, log on to our website radio.gov.pk and you can also watch the live video streaming of our bulletins on the link facebook.com forward slash radio Pakistan news 